12.40 a.m. WSBC. Welcome back, folks, to another week of the Hoolies Hooli Radio Hour. Yeah. This show is presented to you by Fox's Pizza. There's one in Orland Park and in Mokina. Finest thin crust pizza on the south side of Chicago. Go get yourself yeah. some today. Sizzling, hot, delicious, oily za from Fox's. Mm. Flood Brothers Disposal. When you're done with the pie, crumble up the cardboard, <laughs> put it right in a Flood Brothers dumpster. It'll be in the landfill within hours. Yeah. Best in the business, the floods. Madden funds. Ooh, somebody won Mega Millions. Congrats to whoever that gentleman yeah. was. One guy in New Jersey. Unbelievable. Billionaire. Oh, wow. I hope he calls Mike or Dan Madden. Yeah. If he wants to make that money safe and grow, you call Madden funds. Mike mm -hmm. or Dan. And Guinness Irish Stout. Guinness is good for you. My name is Patty Houlihan. I'll be your host all hour. Joining me as always to my What's left. What's happening? Twin brother Billy. Good to be here. We're missing Clay. He's in job training. He's going to come back soon. Yeah. And I'm excited for him because he is the greatest person in the world. Yeah. Hey, crazy week for me. Whoa. Well, it's spring break. Yeah. Right? Yes, like, it is. So it hasn't been crazy, um, but an eventful week. And I've been out on some missions. Oh. Uh, so I went to a, a, a thing called Epic Con, which was out at Navy Pier. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You, you were talking about this last week to me, but I don't think we talked about it on the show. I was talking about it last week because, shout out, I went to Mount Carmel High School, mm -hmm. all right, here in Chicago. The V-Man, Mike Vlamis, uh -huh. very well-known alumni at Carmel, yes. has a son, and I've gotten to know the V-Man. He has a son, Michael Vlamis Jr., who went to Hollywood, became an actor. Yeah, also a Mount Carmel grad. Also a Mount Carmel grad, yeah. who became the star of a show called Roswell, New mm -hmm. Mexico. Mm -hmm. WB. One of those yeah. shows, right? Yeah. I believe it was on um, WB. Yeah, and then he did another movie, and then he wrote and directed a movie called Crossword. Um, okay. Actually, he wrote and started it. He didn't direct it. But anyway, uh, the V-Man introduced me to his son, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, you guys should work together, get something going at yeah. some point. And I yeah. was like, yeah, cool. All right, I'll meet this kid. You yeah. know? And we spoke on the phone. Love this guy. Great kid, yeah. right? Yeah. So, But he has a heartthrobby following. Yeah. A big one. Yeah. Right? And I wasn't aware of how big the following was. No, mm -hmm. and, I'm not either. No, so, I mean you have to, no. you know, fill me in on this here. So a friend of ours passed away last week. Correct. Godspeed to our friend Sean Fagan. Yes. Right. The V Man was friends with Fagan. Mm -hmm. So that's he was the one who I called when I heard that Sean had passed away. I was like, oh, V Man will know about this. Right. So then while I was on the phone with the V Man, he was like, Hey, why don't you come down to this thing? I, I was like, Hey, I saw that your son's going to be at Epic Con. He's like, Yeah, you got to come. Uh -huh. It's gonna be great. Come yeah. on down. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I, I, you know what? I would like to meet Michael. I haven't talked to him ever. You know, we've spoken on the phone numerous times. But, but in person. Yeah, but in person, I was like, this will be a few laughs. Yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah. Also, my reason for going to this, all right? Yeah. Was on the show Roswell, New Mexico. Michael Blom Blomis Jr., his co star is a, is a girl named Lily Cowan, all right? Mm hmm. She's a beautiful young actress. Yeah. She happens to be the daughter mm -hmm. of Christine Baranski. Okay. okay. Who yeah. everybody would know from, from Broadway. You know, theater people all know Christine Baranski. She Baranski's. was on, what series was she on for a long Sybil? time? Sybil. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, she uh, and she was a friend of our parents. Correct. Growing in New York City when we were young. Yeah. Um, oh, The Good Wife. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. And uh, uh, she was at the American Shakespeare Theater Festival in Stratford, Connecticut with our dad when in like the late 70s. All right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I wonder if Lily Cowell's going to be at... Epic con. Yeah. And then boom, I see that she's on the roster to be there. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna go to Epic Con and introduce myself to Lily Cowan and we're gonna fall in love and run away. <laughs> oh, that was your dream. That was that was kind of <laughs> my dream. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Through the V-Man. From the V-Man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and his son, Michael Vlamis Jr. Did you tell the V-Man this? Uh, yeah, I did. I told. I didn't tell his son this because Michael Jr. would have been like, I, he used to date her at one point. He'd be oh, like, no, boy, you no. can't. Yeah. No, stay uh, away. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I went to Carmel too. <laughs> Quit sniffing around. Uh huh. Uh huh. Name dropping. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, I didn't. Yeah. You so, went. I went. All right. I went last Friday. Mm -hmm. It's raining out. Uh, I haven't been. It was at Navy Pier. It was snowing last Friday. Actually, it was like flurries. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And let me explain like what this Epic Con thing is. It's like Comic Con, mm -hmm. but like not as big, right? I think it's like a step down from com from Comic Con. Okay. But like it's just these conventions, the same way that like we used to like love to go to baseball card shows and things like that when we were kids. Yes. All right. 
So you'd go and you'd see like, oh, there's Azzy Smith, oh, Mark McGuire, you know, and everybody would wait in line, you know? Uh -huh. Except this time for like Epic Con, it's like, oh, it's <coughs> David Boreanaz, you know? Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like there's 50 people in line to get an autograph. You sure. Know? And so you're looking at all the people, like the shows that they're on, you know, like JAG, NCIS, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I didn't know that these people had as big, big of followings yeah. as they do. Yeah. And I don't know if you know, and I don't know you call these guys like C-level or D-list celebrities. I don't think it's, I, I guess that's a, that's, that's not a nice thing to say, right? No, they're just They're not, working actors. Yeah, they're, they're not leading men. Right. You know, they should not, just call it the working actors convention. <laughs> these are the actors you actually see. Um, yeah. But anyway, got to go. I don't know what I'm walking into. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I get there. And uh, it's it's empty, really. Nobody's there yet, right? I went to the hall. There's this hall in Navy Pier, and they all the booths are set up, and all the pictures of everybody, you know. Yeah. And it's weird because it's not just like, it's not just like a lot. Well, it is. There's a lot of hot people, you know, beautiful people, beautiful young people. Yes, that are playing aliens, or because um, Michael Vlamis Jr. plays an alien on the show. Yeah. Um, or some other sci-fi thing, whatever, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then there's also the other character actors in the show, right? Where it's like a little troll-looking guy, you know, nah, you know. Yeah. And people, yeah. and he's got a booth, you know. He plays this, the 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 truth teller on a show sure. or something, you know. Sure. So it's diversified. Right? Yeah. There's a little diversity in the room. Yeah. Can't other have guys all hot in, people. Other people in like like Comic Con, are there people like in costume? What their part would look like on. Yeah, well, this oh. is what I'm getting at. Okay. I don't know what I'm walking into. I'm like, is it, I've seen the Comic Con bits. Yeah. Right. But I don't know if it's like, if it's going to be guys walking around, you know, in Viking outfits or, or dressed as, you know, Marvel characters, Star Trek, all that stuff. No. Yeah. More so, more fan lovey. You know, like I love so and so. Fanboys. A lot of fanboys. Yeah. A lot of fanboys. And so officially, I guess I'm a Michael Vlamis Jr. fanboy. Yeah, you're a fanboy. I'm a fanboy. But we haven't talked about fanboy in a long time. Fanboy, 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 fanboy. 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 Great, and, uh, yeah, great musical on Broadway that's yet to be released. The, fanboy. Yeah, we've written some of it. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to send this to Michael Vlamis Jr. I'm going to say, hey, get this to Lily Cowell and get it to Christine Baranski. We want to pitch her on Fanboy, mm -hmm. the musical. Yep. Done. Anyway, I go to, uh, and I, I'm there. I'm looking around. It's huge, right? Yeah. And then he's got, he's the only booth that afternoon that he, like, he, he was, he's like, love, loves his fans. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so good. he opted, like, you know, they're on contract to be there for certain hours. He was like, no, nah, I'm going to just put a thing out that says I'm going to be in the ballroom to sign autographs the a day early. You know? Well, that's nice of him. Sell some merch. Sure. You know? So he was, did there. he have his own t shirts and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Oh wow. T shirts, like coffee mugs, like all kinds of stuff. With he's his got, name on it. He's or? got handlers. Yeah. Oh wow. Because they all handle like his a lot of his social accounts too, right? So uh -huh. he's an influencer of sorts, right? Sure. So there's that. But uh yeah. And then I saw there's the V man, I see his dad. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's quite the character. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm so happy you came. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's real, the V man is the nicest very man. Very sweet yeah. man. Yes, very sweet. But yeah. like that's part of his shtick. Sure. You know, you know, come away, give me a hug. You know, you look beautiful. You look good. Yeah. You know, uh, he goes, look at this. Isn't this great? All these people. And then so he interacts with Michael's fans as well. Oh wow! Right? Okay. Come, like, Dad. How are you? What's your name? You know. Oh wow! Stephanie yeah. from Georgia. Thank you for coming. Michael loves you. You know, it's the best. Yeah, right? yeah. Michael loves you, yeah, right? Yeah. She's like, you're his dad. You know, I'm his dad, yeah. yeah. You know? And then he's like, points at me, and he's like, this is another famous actor. Oh, you know? no. Like, he pumps me up. Uh, yeah. You know? He's been on tapioca. He's been on, <laughs> he's going over, like, my career, because he knows my set sure. that nobody knows. Right. Right, my list of credits. Yeah. And But he, God love him, he knows him. Mm -hmm. And the girls are just like, nah, okay. Yeah. Um, and then he's got two buddies, Mr. Vlamis, Mike, well, the V-Man. Yeah. He's got his two buddies with him. That sure. Also, they're, also, they're all Southeast Siders, right? This is like, you know, if there's a Vinny Chase, right? <laughs> right. If you're talking entourage, you know? Sure. Michael Vlamis Jr. is like the Vinny Chase okay. of like Annunciata Parish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like where all those guys grew up. Right, right. right. And uh, so it was fun. It's a to reference to the show Entourage for anybody that's not, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, for our older listeners, they Correct. might not know. 
You yeah. know where you can always bring your entourage? Where? Fox's yes, Hot you Pizza. Yes, you can. Out in Orland Park and Mokina. They have a wonderful dining room if you mm-hmm. want to throw a party. We'll be back after this. Chicago Southsiders have always known where to get the best of pizza. For over a half century, the Fox family has been creating that delicious thing crust za that your mouth will tell you, this can only be Fox's. It's a Chicago Beverly neighborhood institution at 99th and Western, as well as in South Suburban Orland Park, where they combine delicious food with an Irish pub ambiance. Fox's is owned by Tom and Frank Fox, whose parents, Frank and Therese, bought the Western Avenue location from Al Capone's sister back in 1964. The Fox family opened the doors to their Orland Park location in 1973 at 143rd and Ravinia Avenue. Chicagoans will recognize the stone turrets of their Irish castle, where great times have been celebrated for generations. Fox's is perfect for the whole family. Pick up or delivery. Or you can dine in, relax, and have a cocktail with your dinner. Whether it's steak, ribs, chicken, or especially pizza, it's all good. Having a party? Fox's also does catering. Call Foxes in Chicago's Beverly neighborhood at 773-239-3212 or in South Suburban Orland Park at 708-349-2111. Mention this show for a free toothpick. Flood Brothers Disposal was started over 90 years ago by their grandfather. With more than 20 family members still involved with the day-to-day operations, the floods are service-oriented and believe that the right way is the only way to do something. Flood Brothers is priced competitive and still offers the personal touch in an industry-trending corporate. For client-centric service without all the corporate garbage, call Flood Brothers today for a quote on your solid waste recycling and yard waste collection services. Call Bob Flood today at 630 1400 or go online at floodbrothersdisposal.com. With a history going all the way back to 1896, the International Union of Operating Engineers has continued to protect workers and their families with loyalty and brotherhood. Logo 150 has continued to thrive through economic booms and busts with careful training and aggressive organizing. Under the leadership of President and Business Manager Jim Sweeney, Local 150 has implemented programs and action plans to create work, protect benefits, and keep members working. And they've been helping the Irish American community of Chicagoland for just as long. The Hibernian Radio Show is proud to be associated with Jim Sweeney and Local 150, and we salute the continuing efforts of the International Union of Operating Engineers and their support of Irish and Irish American families now and in the future. Thanks to Local 150. Hey, listeners, I know we don't talk about finance much on this show, outside maybe the amazing Bitcoin the musical, which we currently have in development. But I do want to take a moment and tell you about two brothers who make this show possible and why you should consider having an honest conversation with them about the future of your finances. Mike and Dan Madden are the brains behind Madden Funds. They've been lifelong friends to Bill Clay and me, and we entrust the Maddens with our money and the precious donations of our listeners so we don't let outrageous ideas get the best of us. And you should, too. Do yourself a favor and reach out to Dan or Mike Madden today to book a consultation on the future of your finances. If you have questions about your financial future or current situation, give them a call. The number is 708-848-3200. Again, that number is 708-848-3200. Or you can visit their website, Madden Funds, at www.maddenfunds.com. Again, www.maddenfunds.com. Fanboy, the Broadway musical. We just oh. wrote it. This fanboy fell into my lap. <laughs> Starring Chris Elliott as, as the fanboy. Fanboy, 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 fanboy. fanboy. Sing good enough. That's the opening number. Fanboy, fanboy, fanboy. <laughs> it's people chaos. Are, people are running up and down the aisles. Yeah. Fanboy, fanboy. <laughs> fanboy, fanboy. Oh, look. Fanboy's cast list. Actors and actresses from fanboys. Uh-oh. Uh, you mean somebody wrote fanboys before us? <laughs> it looks like it. Can we get okay. the rights? Yeah, in 1998, four childhood buddies with the shared love of all things Star Wars reunite for one final hilarious odyssey. Fanboys. It's for six ninety five. It was made by the Weinstein Company. Ooh. Whoa! A vicious yeah. gut punch to the fanboys franchise. <laughs> Welcome back, Hoolies Hoolies, second half of the program. Yeah, Thank you, Mike, for that bump. <laughs> Little throwback. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so I went to uh, Epic Cons. Mm. That's what... Uh, right. 
I went to go see Michael Blomis Jr. Were there any people like, ah, ah, screaming or anything like that? No. Okay. No. But there was a very eclectic group of fans. You know, I'll get to that. Because I, so uh, I was like looking like, around. I'm going to meet some chicks Well, here. I was, I, I, yeah, I was like, where's Lily Cole? Yeah. Well, I want to introduce myself. I, I'm, I'm very a, beautiful. Yeah, I can see there the picture she is, of her right has there. a picture of her. Knockout. Yeah. So I'm like, mm. uh, <laughs> You know, and that would have been awkward too. Like, hi. Our, our, yes, it would. Our parents used to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 44 years old. I know Michael's dad. Hi. <laughs> you want a beef? Right. You, you want a what combo you, or something? What are you doing tonight? You want to go to the Billy Goat? <laughs> and get a burger? Right. Hashtag Billy Goat. Hey, oh, yeah. Hashtag <laughs> Billy Goat. <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger, chicken butter. Yeah. Um, that was part of my fantasy, my fanboy fantasy for the weekend. Yes. You know, I thought maybe. I was like, I It's fun know. to dream, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but no, I got to, you know, the, the V Man introduced me to Michael Jr., right? Good. And uh, then we all went out for uh, uh, some food afterwards. Oh, right? nice. Which was nice. Yeah. You know, they invited me to come along because I yeah. was feeling kind of fanboyish. Yeah. You know? But I want to be part of the entourage. Right. I was like, here's got a script about this guy. I got a script about <laughs> Fanboy, the musical. Yeah. I got uh, Bitcoin, the musical. <laughs> Several other things in development. Anthony's dad. Anthony's dad is a sitcom about a kid whose dad's name is Anthony. Well, yeah. his name is Anthony. Yes. But it's about his dad. His dad's a real tough Tough guy. Right, tough Italian guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's dad. Uh, I have Doug the White House alien, which yes. is also a uh, real high concept show. But these days, with all the alien talk, we're on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the great thing about Doug the White House alien is that through the presidents just revive the show. <laughs> right. Every time we have a new president, bang, four new years of content. <laughs> Of excellent content. Can you, you imagine know? how good the Biden one would be? So and the, the Trump one. The I mean. greatest political satire in American history. Doug the White House alien is up for 14 <laughs> Emmy nominations this year. We probably could do that. Just smash the Emmys. Do you make it live action or do you do a cartoon of Doug the White House alien? Or do you have oh, like, man. you know, like people are like, do you want to make the alien look like that thing from the shape of water? You know? Oh, you want to alien... get Guillermo, uh, what's his name involved? Del Toro. Del Toro. Oh, yeah. Hey, you do the alien. No, it's like, no. Then do the, the alien. alien. Yeah. Who's going to do the alien? <laughs> hey, when we make this show, who's going to do the alien? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, who's going to do it? You know, like, put it together, make it look. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think if you're going to make we a show. We never really discussed it, whether he was going to be furry or hairless. I thought we, we had. Comedy shows about aliens, it's always a fur, like Elf, right? Right. You, always, you go furry. You know, you go, you can't, like, if you get, if it's <laughs> slimy and talking to you, then it gets a little, then all of a sudden the networks are like, nah, nah. I've always wondered in the, uh, in, in that realm of aliens, when you think about it, you're like, why, you know. Why do they have hair? Why, do, why does every alien have to be skinless, that, or not skinless, but hairless that we see? And now it's like, where did the hair come? What part of space well, is that from? Well, they don't have you know? to be, Bill. We could make Doug have hair. Uh, okay. I think we can give Doug the White House alien. He's a hairy alien. He holds, yeah. he holds the secret to the cure of balding. That's it. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It's, it's like in the president's book. You know, like in the, in the book of secrets for national yeah. treasure, they go, the president's book. Right. There's, there's an alien something. that lives in the White there's House. Oh, by the way, he he's also, known the cure for balding for the, the last hundred years. Yeah. And, uh, and COVID and everything else. He, he would have fixed it, but yeah. it's too, too dangerous. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring this up with uh, the vlogs. Oh, at man. All. I should have, though. I'm like, yeah. You know. But anyway, we went out, and that was my day for Epicons. But I was, I was interested because uh, I was like, because Michael was in, like when he was watching him with the fans, he was interacting with them like they knew each other. Yeah, that's cool, you know. And I was like, do you know these people? You know. Yeah. And some of them were like, hey, how's you your know? family? How the kids? Well, no, there wasn't. His, well, his, the V man, his dad would have been my like, kid that. just got his you know? GED. You got any kids? We, uh... <laughs> How many kids you get? <laughs> kids are great, aren't they? Yeah. Right. Um, no, there was none of that. Okay. Uh, but Michael seemed to be, and I was like, is that weird for you? You know? And I was like, is this the first time? Like, how do you know these people? And he's like, oh, they DM me back and forth on Insta. And, oh. I, and of course, I look at their pictures. 
Like, is this person going to And I recognize me? them when they yeah. come and show up. But I'm like, that's that's where I would start getting, like, a little creeped out, you know? Sure. Um, and he's like, yeah, that's just part of being, you know, a celebrity. Like, you get used to that. And I was like, oh, man, I never, until I was up close to it, I couldn't, you know, I kind of felt for him. I was like, I mean, it's great how nice he is to his fans. So trusting, right? Yeah. Where I'm such a, you know, wise guy. That I would be lampooning the, the idea of the whole thing the whole time, and that's probably the, why they would never hire me to do that. <laughs> They'd be like, no, 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 you're not coming to Epic Cons. And then, may, may, uh, you know what, though? To my fans, yeah, I, no matter what they look like, I'd be like, I love you. you sure. Know? I'm not going to be judgmental. No. I say, you know, or be, you know, but I'm sure there's the temptation to be like, well, how weird is it if somebody comes up to you and is like, are you still wearing those blue boxers that you had in that Instagram pic? And that's, like, yeah. That's... Yeah, I got them. You know? I sharded in them a week ago. You want me to, you mail, want them me to, to mail them to you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. That's like the insensitive guy at, at Epic Cons, you know? That'd be funny if you had like old sweat socks, t shirts. Well, there's a guy next to you. Bag. There's a nice guy next to you who's got his own merch with people's pictures on it. <laughs> with you, his picture on it. You bring your stuff that you're giving to Goodwill. I bring my dirty laundry and I'm like, look at these. These pair of hash, I hash browned in those. Take those. Those are yours. I'll sign them for you. <laughs> you know, nail them to your wall. Sure. Like Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was my bit, uh, my epic cons. Fun Good. story, fun time. Um, and then apparently they all went out the, the next night. So I missed, we missed Lily Cal. Oh, it's too bad. But she, she now lives in the universe of this program forever. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, it's spring break. I got the it kids is. home, you know? Yes. Um, they've been going to a lot of, you know, urban air and places like, you know, lots What's of urban air. It's like a jumpy, like a, a, it's oh, an yeah. amusement park for kids. Well, it's not an amusement park, it's a place where kids get the jump. Ah. Oh. You know? What an idea. Right, you know. What an idea. It's a very elaborate tech infused jump house where they no, they're on like zip lines and okay. you know, they got big airbags they jump on to. That's fun. Yeah. Mikey went there. My son went there with his buddies the other day after Dave and Busters. So oh wow. Yeah, they're on like a big, you know, God bless. One of his friend one of our friend his friend's dads offered to take all those boys out. Like all his all their buddies. Oh, that was nice of them. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, but yeah, that's the, you know, you're trying to keep the kids occupied during spring break. And, and, and so that's where, where you're at. It's where I'm at, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got Easter coming up. I, uh, I went to the gym. Oh, you finally did it, huh? It's on. Okay. You, like, so you, before you've been talking about this. Yeah. What all of a sudden Made, it was the click point where you were like, today's the day I'm doing it. I had been telling myself, you know, like, I got to do it. And then my car broke down on Monday. Uh, you know, I had car trouble again. Like, I got car trouble. Like, no. I'm in terrible shape. What yeah, am I going to do? Exactly. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It just was like I, I was going to go on. I was telling myself all weekend, I'm like, you're going to go to the gym on Monday. And then, of course, on Sunday night, my car craps out. And I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? When I get that car back on Tuesday, no excuses. You're doing it. Like, like, and I did. And um, I had a, luckily I have, it's always good to have a, a support system or a friend who goes, you know. Uh -huh. And um, I got a text. And I was like, you know, he's like, are you going to live up to your end of this bargain? Oh, it's a guy friend? It's a buddy of mine that I work with. He's like, you're going to go to the gym. You're going to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Of, you know, and I, but hey, you want to come to the gym? But he's you? just like he wasn't there to work out with me. Like he was there. Like he was like to jab me because I say sure. I'm going. He's like you're not going. You're not going. I'm like well, if you're going, you'll see me there. Yeah. Um. And I did when I walked in. He was walking out. And he was like, oh, you made it. Yeah. So he put your feet to the fire and he did it. Yeah. But once you get that kind of encouragement and you do it once, you're like, all right. And so then, what was your routine? Were you like, oh, I'm gonna hit the weights and ectomorph today? No, like it all starts no. today. So you I have to get been, the app downloaded, all the exercises. So I've been in. doing, preparing myself a little bit the past two weeks before that. I'd started into a push-up regimen every day just to kind of get my blood flowing in the morning. Yeah. And now once I stretching, start stretching, then, and then I was like, all right, well, when I go to the gym, we're not, you know, you can do more of that stuff and then get some cardio going, just get a good sweat going. So I'm not like doing like weights yet. I did do a little bit of weights in the, you know, the station area. Yeah. Um, but no free weights yet. Uh, and, you know, some planking, you know, that kind of stuff, some long stretches. 
feel great. Though. How is the people watching? That's my That's favorite part. It's unbelievable. Are you still at the, the planet of fitness? I am at the planet of the fitness. Ring a ding ding for planet <laughs> fitness. Hashtag them. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, you, you go into a place like that, though. You got to, like, we were talking about this. I didn't realize it because we're still, I guess, in March here. Yeah. We're still in the phase where, like, the place is packed. Oh, yeah. At, like, the New Year's people are, like, still getting after still it. still getting they after it. They haven't given up yet. And I'm like, yeah, they'll give up. Well, as soon as it gets hot out, they'll give up. Maybe. You know? As soon as it gets warm out, they're like, no. Um, or they'll be working out, you know, doing their workouts outside rather than coming to the gym. Yeah. Uh, spring breakers? Mike said, oh, yeah, well, spring breakers. No, I don't know. I can't tell. You know, though, I can't tell the difference between a 15-year-old and a 25-year-old anymore. I you know? can't tell the difference between the 15-year-olds and 25-year-olds. <laughs> they're, like, they're all just spring breakers to me. Yeah. Um, so, yes, the people watching was, you know, I got in there and I was like, hmm. You know, I'm the guy that starts doing my stretches without a, you know, without laying on a yoga mat or anything, and then everyone's gonna like. You're like I got no, on. No, 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 no. I got on the elliptical. You gotta wipe it down. No, I got on the elliptical and I go. I'm staring. I'm like, how do I get this thing to start? You right, know? right. You gotta start moving on it first. Did you go up to the handles and go. <laughs> one, no, I did not this, sniff the handles this on the elliptical. This, this one's not for me. If I saw a guy in there sniffing the elliptical <laughs> handles, I might lose my mind. You guys, you saw that? It's gonna be me. I'm like, what's this guy's story? He's like, sniffing all the equipment. Wipe it down and look at it and go. <laughs> no. That's you, I suppose one. you could probably get fired for not fired, but like for smelling the machine, <laughs> like kicked out of. You know, what if you were, like, some girl was sitting on a bench press, and then as soon as she got off, you went up and, like, sniffed, and, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would probably get you kicked uh, out of the club. I never thought about that before. Yeah. But you could arguably say, like, no, I'm a clean person, and I'm, it's not for me. It's just, it doesn't hit my scent Well, profile. I think that's the idea, that everything gets wiped down. The wipe downs kill the scents, too. So you're not allowed to... Uh, <laughs> I suppose, but how do people know that you're actually, you mean actively sniffing it? You have to go up to it and go, like, <laughs> mm, you know, like, because otherwise you're just standing there like, I, mm. true. I suppose you could, there's probably people that do it and they're just like, you know, do uh, just to be subtle. So people don't oh, like see them like, that's even weirder. It. They don't want to embarrass anyone. They're just like, where you walk by the machine and you just go, someone goes, did he just try to smell the machine? Yeah, no, exactly. Did he snarl at me? <laughs> What's that all about? Right. Yeah. No, I didn't do any uh, machine smelling. All right. Well, it's important. You should get after that next time um, you're there. Yeah, it's always an interesting environment, though, um, places like that, because... Um, well, they're the planets. Rooms they're are, planets. They're, it's, right? yeah, it's a you're planet. On a planet. You're there's, on a planet. A planet of fitness. There's species of all different kinds. Right. Yeah. So um, you, we must petition the people at Planet Fitness and ask them what their sniffing policy is. And obviously, are. you always have the guys that are like... You know, super jacked, like ah. And then you have like, you yeah, know, oh yeah, you're like ah, ah. Well, he's like, you know, oh, there's yellers there. I heard a guy yell while he's on the bench. Ah. Oh, like, oh wow. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Everyone's like, ooh, he's tough. <laughs> oh, he's tough. Yeah. Is that what happens when people yell? And they, I always love the two, the mirror. Like, I guess it's true. Like, people like looking in the mirror while they're working out. Oh yeah, they do. You know? Oh yeah, when you get your pump. Like, yeah. You know, like Arnold, like it's better than coming in the best night. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, um, do you like to look in the mirror when you're when you're working out? You know, when I was in high school, you don't until you start seeing some, some definition taking place, and that's where you see the guys going. You know, like <laughs> still, mm. the flex of the right arm. Um, they didn't have a scale there. I was like, where's this guy? Because I got off the treadmill. So here's my routine. I did. Well, we're gonna have to wait because we're this is oh, the end. Are we? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're at the There's, end of the radio. Oh, hour. yeah. All right. Well, then we'll talk. Oh, we're about gonna continue on the podcast, other side. Podcast, podcast land. Yeah. Right after this. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Hooli Zooli. Whoa. Second half of the program. <laughs> Planet Fitness. Yeah. Don't smell the machines. I did do some push-ups and get up and be like, yeah. Did, oh, you did? <laughs> Looked in the mirror afterwards? No, I did not look in the mirror. I got up and was like, okay, all right. You know. There's also the guys who look in the mirror like they're looking at their gym clothes. You see those people? Sure. At the Planet of Fitness? Yeah. I got to go back there because I haven't been there. I love the different paces that people go at. I'm like, this guy's like, I, I look at like, you know, you'll be like looking at someone's treadmill and you'll be like, how, many, how long have they been on that one? And you can see the time. And it'll be like, you know, an hour and 20 minutes. And they've only gone like... 
two miles. Mm-hmm. You're like, what the hell? How slow are you going? You know? Right, me. Everybody's got to go. Then there's one base. guy that, run, that I've seen him the last two days in a row in front of me where he he gets on the truck. Now, this guy, but then I saw his calorie burn count, and I was like, wow. Oh, you're guy's... looking at these guys' stats when they're done? <laughs> I'm looking like because like I'm on mine and I, I could see like one over there, one there, and maybe the person next to me. I mean, you just got your earbuds and you're you're yeah. walking or running. You can start being like, what are you they can, doing? You just they glanced. Like, yeah. yeah. This one guy like he he holds the sides like of what? Like he's running, right? Remember, we're on the radio. I know. Too. So like on you know like handlebars on the side of the treadmill. Each one has them, you know. Okay. And like he 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 literally like. Holds himself up and then like kicks his legs back and forth and then puts himself back down and goes back into a sprint It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Oh, like he like pulls himself up and is like now nah, I'm gonna start running he, he, he picks himself up and he still keeps moving his legs so they're not touching the treadmill Oh, and then he when he lands back down He's still running again and this guy whipped out like four miles and like, you know, okay uh, and like 45 minutes. Well, he's got a method. Like, wow, this guy's flying. There's probably a method to his madness. There is, and then I tried it. Oh, uh, and that, 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 <laughs> that's where you put your legs up and then go back down and then fly off the machine. Exactly. <laughs> that didn't happen, but I did get, that happened to me yesterday. So, like, the first day I went, I did a half a mile on the elliptical. We finally figured it out to get it moving. There was one where you couldn't. The like, only thing I don't like your, your arms don't go fat. They just the, they stay stationary. I got on that one. I was like, this is too hard. This one. Then I got on the other one where you go back. For, so I did a mi- half mile on that. Then I did a mile and a half on the treadmill. Good then the for fo- you. Then the following day I went back, and I did a I did a little bit less because I did a half mile on the elliptical again. Then I did only a mile because by the time like I got on the, I got through the half mile on the on the treadmill, my calves. We're like locking up on me. I'm like, oh, I'm cramping. I'm cramping. I'm oh, like, yeah, I gotta yeah. get some more water. I gotta start. I'm still sore. Like my calves. It's the only thing that's sore. Are my calves. My really, quads that's are... good. Maybe your hair will come back. There's a guy on the form, tre- the hair loss form, Tressless on Reddit. Really? All he says all the time is, if you want to get your hair back, you do calf raises. What? Yeah, just this. Just go like this with your calves. Just do like thousands of them a day. Imagine doing that all day Just long. Just seeing bald guys doing that everywhere, calf yeah. raises. Yeah, you doing calf raises? Let me We're, see your dome. And what was his uh, meaning on, you know, his point on Trestless about this? Boy, we give Trestless that, that whole tag on Reddit a lot of talk. Well, that's where we're going to become famous. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, on the, it's in the bald forms, the bald man forms. But all the guys... Do you wear like, a hat when you're working out at Planet Fitness? No. Oh, you go, you go full on Statham? Full on Statham, dude. Yeah. Just let that dome, like, you know, let it sweat and go, baby. Oh, all right. Yeah. So you're mopping it off. Mm-hmm. And, ah. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Oh, Mike, look at this. Mike pulls it up, our producer, Mike Sarkowski. Uh, calf raises has oh, has saved my hair growth. Oh, my God. OMG. Satire, though. Hello, guys. I stopped calf raises now. I have thick, luscious hair. Please try this. I have discovered training your feet muscles will instead decrease DHT due to its anaerobic properties and hence will improve hair growth. I have done a very scientific research with science, so it's true. (laughs) Thanks, and you are welcome for the thick hair. 78 upvotes. Unreal. Calf raises, dude. I'm telling you. The answer to everything. Is that the one that you had read and you were like, oh, cool. I believe this. Well, <laughs> I read a lot of the balding forums because I fancy myself kind of a bald I, baldy scientist. A baldologist. Mike has a note. Onion juice and calf raises. Yeah. We've... Boom. <laughs> There's a guy. I haven't, I haven't had the. If I saw a guy at Planet Fitness with onion, like he's smelled... like no, a sponge of onion I, juice on his head. If I walked by him instead of smelling the handle of a, you know, of an elliptical, I went, smelled him and was like, onions, calf raises. I know what you're up to, brother. Yeah. It looks nice. It's coming back, you know? Right. He'd be like, Lisi at the gas station told me that, because that, that was the woman who told me about the the Indian woman that told me about onion hair. Yeah, right, yeah. it was. You need to put onion juice. Before we ever, before I ever visited the balding forums right. on the internet, yeah. um, there was an Indian woman that I bought my cigarettes off of daily. <laughs> yes. Um, who recommended to me that I put onion Cut an juice onion in, in my half head. and just rub it out of your head. Yeah, and I thought that was like an old Indian wives' tale yeah. until I got on terrasse lace. 
<laughs> and discovered the truth. Yeah. That there is this guy some, just buying, some merit This guy's just it. going out there and buying cocktail onions and just taking the juice and dipping a rag in it and being like... Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that's... Yeah, like like it's a squashed grape and he's just <laughs> rubbing a g g cocktail onion across his head. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Then he looks at, it, and then he's got the mirror, and he's going, Neh. "It's not working. Maybe it's working." <coughs> yeah. Um. Well, I'm glad you got back to the gym. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good feeling. I'll be there. Uh, I'll make an attempt tomorrow as well. Did you buy? I, I saw in your apartment. I that did. I said, you know, I've, you got I, some I, muscle milk. I had some Bring muscle. Bring for muscle milk. <laughs> muscle uh, milk. Yeah, got some of that. Got some slim fast. You know. Okay. Um. Got all the health stuff, smoothies, fruit, you know. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna healthy do food's it. expensive though. Yeah, it is. Like I I got out of Jewel and I was like, whoa, this was just 130 bucks for all this stuff. Right. What the? I only got was broccoli. Broccoli's good for your hair too. I hear. That's also yeah. Oh. Huh? Calf raises broccoli, onion juice. <laughs> um, no fap. Can't do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. If okay, you're that's those are my that's that's our Norwood episode of the week on the Norwood. So scale. yeah, so I you know went to the gym feeling good. Went to the dentist. Oh, you're knocking well. it all out. Oh, we're just on, it's on. You, Billy's being reborn. The rebirth. Rebirth. So, waited, yeah. so it's Billy. So Billy New Year is right after St. Patrick's Day, really. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's yeah, Billy New Year. I have to wait till then. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, the dentist, no new cavities. Thank oh, you very much. Oh. Um, just uh, got to get a crown fixed and uh, a little bonding, and uh, we're on Good. our way. I'm happy for you. You're Thank on you. your way. You're on your way to what, though? I we're on our way to a healthier smile. <laughs> oh, a new Clear Choice commercial. <laughs> Probably. To a healthier smile. Mm -hmm. So that's me. And um, by the way, the guy that was, I had a, a gentleman who was my dentist today. Tell you that you had nice teeth? He did not say I had nice teeth. Well, he said, you're in good shape. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't see any problems. Okay. Um, he did not uh, have a claw hand. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so. Just like my last dentist. Well, I asked him, and uh, I was talking with him, and I said, you know, he said, oh, where'd you grow up? You know, I said, around here. You know, I said, where are you from? He goes, oh, Indiana. You know, I go, where'd you go to? I go, oh, yeah. And I go, whereabouts? He goes, Valpo, Valparaiso. Did you go, you like when people uh, sing to you? I, I did not ask him <laughs> if, I, if he liked it when people sang to him. <laughs> you should have. Dude, the gag reflex when people are doing those x-rays now. Oh, it's brutal. Oh, I was tearing up again. You know, I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. guys like, hey, relax the throat, relax the throat. Ah. I had a hygienist it to it. Yeah, I was like, ah. she's like, anything wrong? And I was like, oh, well, I have a gag reflex. She's like, it'll be okay. And it, well, actually, it wasn't as worse as the last time I had been there, so. Maybe. The worst part is when you do the gag reflex because you're a smoker, and you're like, ah, ah, and like a cloud of smoke comes out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a smoker. <laughs> um, but I asked the doctor, and I said, uh, he, I was like, did, did you go to dental school? And he's like, I went to dental school here in uh, Illinois. Did you go to dental school? Of course you went to yeah. dental I hope so. And uh, Where did you go? Yeah, you, I was like, where'd you go? You know, And he's like, in Illinois. I'm like, oh, you went to U of I dental school? You know? And he goes, no, I went to a place called Midwestern. And I went, Muds! So he's a MUDS, you know, he went to MUDS, but I didn't want to tell him that uh, my brother had been a client at MUDS, and, you know. and They pulled this tooth right They took away head. Jeff. They took Jeff away, and I've been saving for a couple of years to get that to get Jeff replaced. Yeah. It's about to happen soon, too. Good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I have a, yeah. I okay. said, you know, I'd never really, I went to MUDS once for a consultation, but I didn't really have any work done. But I was thinking, you know. You probably would have been in the chairman like Muds. I don't know if you'll come. Well, I would have said this. I don't think Muds did everything in their power to try to save that tooth. All right. You know, I think that there's a if 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 Jeff had been a human being, <laughs> I'd have been calling personal injury attorneys. Okay. Sure. Because I just feel that was you know they they yanked the cord on him way too soon. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. So, uh, here's something that's thought I was thinking about the other day. What's this? And it's kind of a health topic thing. Okay. All right. Um, I had a kid. I was driving somebody the other day who I presumed farted in my car. A child farted in your car because it. I well, I could. It, it was <laughs> baffling to me because it was gaggingly bad. Oh, you're right? like, how did that come out of that kid's? How could that kid fart like that? Well, it was so bad that I was like, is that person sick? 
Like, like oh wow, it was deathly. I was just like, oh, oh. and you can't... it was in your car. Yeah, but I'm. I were you driving? Yeah. And these just one of your kids' friends. Well, then for a minute I was like, did I fart? And not know it, and it's just like, <laughs> awful. <laughs> you know, these kids it's are just like, like the anxiety ah. in my head. I'm like. Oh, I never want like, Mr. Houlihan. That, well, that's how you do it. You just drop a bomb in the car with the kids. They'll never ask you for a ride again. Maybe that's what I'm going to start doing because she, my daughter Charlotte offers me up as the dad who drives everywhere. And my dad will drive us. It's okay. My dad will drive. Right? Yeah. I'm just going to start farting in the car all the time. <laughs> so they're like, ugh. Blow them out of there. <laughs> like, your dad's driving? Forget it. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll hitchhike. You know? Fart, light a cigarette, do everything to make their trip just so uncomfortable. Well, you can't. Well, farting is acceptable, but cigarette smoking dads are not acceptable. I know. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Like most, most parents in town will be like, well, everybody farts. You're taking the ride, you know? Yeah. But if they were like, well, he smokes, they'd be like, maybe we shouldn't let him, you know? know but if you're nuts. just a disgusting, awful farter, <laughs> you're off the You're hook. still good. Anyway, it made me think of this, right? Okay. I was like, ah, oh, it's so bad, you know? Yeah. Who did it, you know? And I don't want to embarrass my daughter or a friend. No. Like, hey, who farted? You right. know, it's just kind of the window goes down like, like mm -hmm. Put your head out the window. Oh my god! What's your dad's address again? No, that's when you light the cigarette and they go, "What are you doing?" You go, "Somebody did something else in here." Oh, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it might have been me, and I'm not sure. <laughs> Can't remember if I've heard it, but it's awful. Okay. Uh, but it made me think: um, Are there scent doctors? You know what I mean? That like, I, what do you mean by a scent? Like a guy who could smell your fart and tell you what you ate? Well, he, well, because you're shocked sometimes that that something like that could come out of a child, something that's awful. disgusting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That you're like, oh, you know, you, you know, you got colon cancer or something. <laughs> like, oh, like he'd be like the, the yeah. He's like I a doctor. I wonder if there's a doctor who's a scent doctor who can like you know. He, he goes. It's kind of colitis. Uh, hypertension. You know, like, <laughs> like, it's got high blood pressure. Right. Is there a fart doc, a fart scent doctor? Um, there might be. It's got to be this. this. Listen, if we've thought of it, there yeah. probably is. We always talk about this. Like, I mean, yeah. we could go on Google right now and go, is there a fart scent doctor? And I'm sure there's a guy that's living in California who's like, yes, I'm a fart scent doctor. I didn't want to Google it. I just wanted to talk about farts on the show, really. That was, so what that happened was my whole impetus. The, what happened to your guest fart? What do you mean? Like, you know, the person that did it in your car. What Did you address it? And you just were like, ick, and... No, I I was like, did somebody like after they left? I was like, did you fart? You know, like, and, did you ask your kid? You know, like, farted. Like, who farted? You know, like, yeah. and they're and my daughter's a teenager now, and she's not going to admit it anymore. You know, uh, yeah. So I'm like, mm. you know, my son Mike would be like, I did it. You know, like, uh -huh. but he wasn't in the car. You know, and yeah. I was just like, I wonder, did I do it or did somebody else do it? You Let know? me ask you a question. After everybody got out of the car, did so you if there was a, a doctor, if, immediately? so if there was a fart doctor in the car, he would have been like. That's a fart of a forty man, forty years old. That's not a fart. Like I can tell, that's not. Oh. A, that's not an adolescent fart. No adolescence, right? In that fart, right? I can tell the age of someone by their farts. <laughs> <laughs> Try me. I'm very successful. I have a booth at Epic. Con. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just some guy just smelling everyone's farts. I, I was not on ah. his show. I wasn't on any show, but I am on Doctor Fart Doctor. Which is uh, a brand new show on Bravo <laughs> Network. <laughs> Has nothing to do with theater. But thoughts are funny, so I guess they're somewhat relatable <laughs> to the American Don't stage. Don't think it can't happen, man. <laughs> right. I would watch it if they had a fart doctor on TV. I'd be like, I got to watch this guy just well, pimple there, farting in the guy's face. There's a, doctor, pimple, pimple, there's a yeah. doctor pimple popper. Why can't there be the fartist? Like a guy who's like, you know, like, you're a truck driver from Ohio. You know, and people are like, oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone in the audience. Oh wow. God. Believe it. Yeah. Uh, Unreal. But I wonder if that would be hard to plan because if you're like the producer, the, the, the wrangling producer of that show, you know, you're like, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to shoot a live episode in 20 minutes. Anyone who's thinking of farting or has to <laughs> fart, please hold it. And we're going to put you in line A. Yeah. Right. If you feel one brewing, <laughs> right, you could be in line B. Right. We need you to talk to the producer and sign a waiver. And anybody that can be in line C, we've got some White Castle sliders over there in the corner for you guys to jam down your throats right now. Right. In the event that your segment or fart goes viral, please know that we own all the rights to your fart. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah. Are we clear? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you experienced it. Or you'd have to be a, you could be a scout for that show. A fart scout? <laughs> you gotta hang out at a lot of Planet Fitnesses. Start walking around and go, uh, I'm a scout for uh, the fart doctor. That, uh, that hasn't happened yet at the gym, but there's always, there usually sometimes clears a gym out. So every now and then. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you haven't been scouted yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no one's been approached cool? me. How would you approach that if somebody walked up to you and said, your physique and personality is striking to me and thinking that maybe you could sign a modeling contract with me. <laughs> could you go to Handsome Boy Modeling School at 44, Bill? Uh, no. Yeah, I could probably do the Handsome Boy Modeling School. Could you be Billy Willis instead of Bruce Willis? <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. Sold. We have to take a commercial break. Oh, okay. More Hoolies Hoolie after this. Flood Brothers Disposal was started over 90 years ago by their grandfather. With more than 20 family members still involved with the day-to-day -day operations, the floods are service-oriented and believe that the right way is the only way to do something. Flood Brothers is price competitive and still offers the personal touch in an industry-trending corporate. For client-centric service without all the corporate garbage, call Flood Brothers today for a quote on your solid waste recycling and yard waste collection services. Call Bob Flood today at 630-261. 10400 or go online at floodbrothersdisposal.com. Chicago Southsiders have always known where to get the best pizza on earth. Fox's Pizza. For over a half century, the Fox family has been creating that delicious thin crust za that your mouth will tell you this can only be Fox's. It's a Chicago Beverly neighborhood institution at 99th and Western, as well as in South Suburban Orland Park, where they combine delicious food with an Irish pub ambiance. Foxes is owned by Tom and Frank Fox, whose parents, Frank and Therese, bought the Western Avenue location from Al Capone's sister back in 1964. The Fox family opened the doors to their Orland Park location in 1973 at 143rd and Ravinia Avenue. Chicagoans will recognize the stone turrets of their Irish castle, where great times have been celebrated for generations. Foxes is perfect for the whole family. Pick up or delivery. Or you can dine in, relax, and have a cocktail with your dinner. Whether it's steak, ribs, chicken, or especially pizza, it's all good. Having a party? Fox's also does catering. Call Fox's in Chicago's Beverly neighborhood at 773-239-3212 or in South Suburban Orland Park at 708-349-2111. Mention this show for a free toothpick. Celebrating 25 years of standing ovations, Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance 25th Anniversary Tour, live at the Chicago Theater, February 22nd. Witness the groundbreaking show which has dazzled audiences with its unique combination of high-energy Irish dancing, original music, and storytelling. Lord of the Dance fans can expect new staging, costumes, and choreography, plus stunning special effects and lighting. Lord of the Dance, February 22nd at the Chicago Theater, on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Hey listeners, I know we don't talk about finance much on this show, outside maybe the amazing Bitcoin the Musical, which we currently have in development. But I do want to take a moment and tell you about two brothers who make this show possible and why you should consider having an honest conversation with them about the future of your finances. Mike and Dan Madden are the brains behind Madden Funds. They've been lifelong friends to Bill Clay and me, and we entrust the Maddens with our money and the precious donations of our listeners so we don't let outrageous ideas get the best of us. And you should too. Do yourself a favor and reach out to Dan or Mike Madden today to book a consultation on the future of your finances. If you have questions about your financial future or current situation, give them a call. The number is 708-848-3200. Again, that number is 708-848-3200. Or you can visit their website, Madden Funds, at www.maddenfunds.com. Again, www.maddenfunds.com. Welcome back. back. Fourth quarter of the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, spring is here. Easter's going to be here. Happy Easter to everybody. Yeah. Because uh, this will air the day before on Holy Saturday. Yes, it will. Um, so uh, everybody have a nice and lovely Easter. Mm -hmm. No eggy farts, none of that, please. No. Be good. Be March nice. Madness this time around Easter. I haven't, we haven't had that March in a Madness. While. March is over. Like, I, I, I don't <coughs> know why. It's over. Well, it's going to be soon. Sunday will. The, the be. tournament, the actual tournament's not going to be over until after March. That, yeah, I believe that, it goes into the second week of that no, next me. week. That annoys yeah. me. I'm just like, get it, just finish it. Play the games quicker. You know, it's all done for TV to stretch it out. And, that, uh, and then the following weekend, you have the Masters after that. Yeah, you do. You have any, uh, who's your pick now? 
that we're we're getting closer. Who do you like? You su- you're sweet on UConn. UConn. Everybody is. Everybody is. I mean, they're just trucking people. They haven't lost since December. Yeah, which makes me think they're due. They're due for that sure. game. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it has been a pretty good tournament. I'd, I'd love to see Illinois. Marquette's still in it. Love to see Marquette. Love to see, yeah, Marquette would be cool because they haven't won one in a long time. Since Seventy-seven. Yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Illinois, same way. I haven't won one in ages. So. Yeah, I don't even know when was the last time they won. Was it was did they uh, did they even win one when they had like Marcus Liberty and Kendall Gill? I don't and, think like, so. I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't think, think they were I've... Final Four, but I don't think they won it. They went to the Final Four with like Deron Williams and like those players too, didn't they? Yeah, I believe so. I don't. Yeah, but yeah they... that was when uh, what's his name was their coach, um, Bill Self. No, before him, Kruger. Lon Kruger. Lon Kruger. Okay, I think yeah, I think Kruger might have been yeah. that coach. You got a good memory. Yeah, it's all those farts I've been sniffing in the backseat of my car. <laughs> wow, all, all the kids just. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, baseball season's upon us. It's opening day here in Chicago. We had it. Yeah. Uh, at least for the White Sox. They they lost one to nothing. Yeah. It's going to be a long year. See, everybody keeps saying that. I I don't know if it's going to be that long of a year. <laughs> they might surprise you. I mean, when you're when you're on a team I'll like that, I'll know by the end of April. Think about this for those players, a lot of those young players. They 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 know that everyone in the neighborhood knows like thinks they suck. Right, and they're like, eh, you know. True. So the bar is so low for them at this point that they can only get pissed off and play well. I think. I mean, yeah, they might get smoked, but I don't. I think they're going to be a little bit more competitive than people think are taking them for. All right, at least okay. that's what I hope. Oh, um, positive fan. I am a positive. And then the reality is, is that they might actually end up like. Imagine if they they are really good. Then Jerry's taking all the credit. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> you know, like then the fan base is going to be so conflicted again. Like, oh, yeah, you know, because if Jerry did put another World Series team out there with like no money, I mean, yeah, oh, people would be like, Dad, Jerry would have to. You'd have to say Jerry was right. He wins the argument. He, are maybe. you are you happy that we're going to be leaning into spring now? It's going to be getting yeah, of course. Warm. Yeah, that always puts me in a good mood. Same. Get the yeah. golf clubs out. Well, it's like I look at it. I'm like, all right, now we got six months. No more snow. No more garbage. You know. Yep. Um, but this winter wasn't that bad, actually. No, it was very mild for the most part. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, the Passion of the Christ with my son the other night. Oh wow! It's which is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, just obviously because I, I hadn't seen that movie in twenty some years, and you know, Easter's coming up, and I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, I forgot how gory and graphic it was mm-hmm. you know but my son mike has seen so much stuff on youtube that he's just like mm-hmm. like i remember when i saw the movie i was like oh these he was unfazed completely really? like i'm like man are they that, they're that desensitized he, he now. Wa- but he had the like the the patience to watch it all the way through or he just you know yeah he did because well because it's that good of a film i think that it's your you're fixated. It's you know, even though it's in Aramaic, you know, yeah. speaking Aramaic in the movie, um, there's subtitles, but we all know the story of Jesus, right? Right, right. So yeah. when you're following it, you kind of know what's, and so <laughs> you're into it. Oh, and looks, do it. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? <laughs> yeah, I am the fattest. Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So we watched it, and that was kind of uh, that was. It was. I was more interested to see like what he knew. Compared to like what was shown on screen. Okay. And he seemed to be able to recognize everybody. So yeah, I guess the dollars I've spent on that Catholic uh, upbringing have, have, have turned. Yeah, it's nice to hear. But it was important to me as a Christian and a Catholic that these kids understand what, what that. Did you this get is Easter? Did you get it's not about bunnies? Did you get the Easter baskets though? Have you done this yet? You, you know. No, I, they're they're too old for Easter. But I mean, yeah, gotta do it. I mean, they're teenage. Mike, my son Mike, he's, got, t- he's gonna be ten. So okay, you gotta get him one. You gotta get him an Easter basket. Oh yeah, chocolate bunny maybe. You know that. Some Skittles. Whoopee you know. cushion. Some fake fart spray. Yeah. Maybe throw <laughs> ten or fifteen bucks in there or something. You know. Oh, all right. Now yeah. it's getting. Yeah, I every uh, some people go way out, you know. Some people oh, know. like some people get their kid like you know like oh you're gonna uh, rather than the Easter basket like we'll just get you one thing like a gift. Yeah, like I don't know, you know. Um, yeah, we never got that as kids. Like no. oh, I'm gonna get you a bike for Easter. What? Speaking of bikes, I'm buying a bike. Are you? That's on my agenda this week. A bicycle, bicycle, or like a motorcycle? Um, like a bicycle, bicycle. It's called a fixie bike. A fixie? Yeah. It's just like a one speed, but it's like a, it's almost like they call them like an urban street kind of bike. But 
Um, yeah, it's just something to whip around in. Where'd you see it? Like, what, oh, they're all over. I mean, you can go to any cyclist shop and then like, like find fixie bikes. Oh, Mike has a note. Bike messengers use the fixie bikes. Yeah, those are like what bike messengers use. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. This is a street. This is a street speed bike, right? Thin, it like looks the thin almost tires. Like, yeah, it's got the thin road tire, is it? But and maybe a little bit of a thicker body sometimes, and you might see on a ten speed, like a ten speed. So it's like in between a mountain bike and a ten speed, kind of in between. Ex exactly. Exactly. Some of them had the flat handlebars. Some of them had the handlebars that go up. You know, whatever. And you can design whatever. How way you much want. are you looking at? What do they want? For I those? saw. I, I was on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Okay. Um, I saw. Uh, you know, people. I'm not buying a brand new bike. This is just to like. I was like, okay, but they're going for like you know anywhere from 150 to like two or three hundred bucks. Oh, that's crazy. Because I remember during COVID when I was buying. I know they were, they were scant. It was like 500 bucks. For and a now there's bike. like if you go on there, there's just lists of them. I mean, you're you're right. A couple years ago, you couldn't find a bike from anybody. Yeah. But now, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. But might as well get the bike. Enjoy it. You know. Oh, so you're really gonna hit the fitness route. You're like, you're, you're turning a new leaf. Here. Trying to change things up a little bit. All right. Enjoy the outdoors. You know. Can't go golfing. Let's go for a bike ride. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Keep Why not? the mind occupied and busy. Well, there's a lot. There's plenty of good trails. Are you gonna become a trail bike guy? Um, I've done those. Like, so I did one two summers ago on a like a off all terrain kind of trail. Um, yeah. No, like it was just like a trail in the woods area here. But we went over to my I went over to my friend's house and yeah, she had um, bikes in the garage. She's got like you know she had two kids right, and it was me and my other buddy and her. And she was like, just come over. Like you guys can if you don't have a bike, just take one of my son's bikes. She's you know and I'm like okay, so we went on the. We went on the this like she's like there's this trail near my house, so we rode it to go to a bar and have and have and lunch get drunk. and have lunch and then rode it back to like her uh -huh. house. Uh -huh. right? But it was like a good like I didn't realize it was probably a good ten mile, six eight miles, eight miles or oh, so. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah. And I that's when I determined like I got to get a fixie bike. Like those those mountain bikes on those for me like a long distance ride like that. No, thank you. No? And my legs, I couldn't walk for like a day afterwards, like two days. Yeah. It was brutal. And well, because you were out of like, shape. so out of shape. So that's why I was like, you were know. Were you smoking on the bike? Like, why don't we get into this bar? No, I didn't. I, had a, I think probably had a cigarette when we got to the bar. I was like, Ugh. Now let me ask you about the cigarettes. Not yeah, that's the other thing. Mode. Yeah. Like, did you have a cigarette when you left Planet Fitness the other day? I absolutely did, yes. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, yeah. Sorry. So you're going to continue smoking while you act on more. I'm going to try to act. I mean, I'm maybe for a little bit, but like you can only get. Let me get rid of some vices at a time here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, kick one thing at a time. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just rip it all off. Just do it okay. up. You know, just suffer. Make you know, offer it up. It's Easter. Okay. Okay. Oh, you know. you're right. We're at the end. Yeah, we are. Uh, fun show. Sure. A lot of fart talk. Usually but that's is. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, 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 Epic Con talk. Yeah. Which is fun. Yeah. I want to thank the sponsors again. Yes. Fox's Pizza, Flood Brothers Disposal, Madden Funds, and Guinness Irish Stout. If you've enjoyed the last hour, you can find us on YouTube. If you're yeah. watching right now, you already found it mm -hmm. uh, at Hooli's Hooli Show. Or you can go to iTunes and search for Hooli's Hooli Show there. Or you can go to hibernianradio.org. Find all the archives. Until next week. See you later. Bye.